In the previous video, we looked at how to get the averaged real-time amplitude data from sounds playing on an audio component. In this video, we're going to continue to develop our wind tree blueprint so that we're able to extract the amplitude of a specific sound wave within the sound cue that's playing and use this to trigger additional sounds and visual effects. Let's have a quick reminder of how the wind tree blueprint is working so far. We have an audio component playing the sound cue ASAB AO Trees Wind 1. The collision sphere gets its radius from the audio component and finds all actors of class BP Tree within it. We cast to these to create an array of BP Tree object references to act upon. In other words, this has given us a collection of all the trees within the radius of the sound that might hear it. When the sound plays, we get events on audio multi envelope value the average envelope value across the audio component, and we go through our array of trees, map the envelope value to an appropriate range, and then send this to a custom event set wind parameters that sits within the tree blueprints. Looking again at our sound cue, we can see that it's comprised of two sounds, trees wind one, and trees wind two. The stronger sounding sound wave is Trees Wind 2. When this wind is strong, we want the trees to creak and some leaves to drop. So we're going to use the amplitude envelope of this sound to trigger an additional sound. Tree creak. And a visual event. Falling leaves. In order to identify the individual amplitude envelopes within the sound cue, rather than getting an average across the sound, we're going to get events from on audio single envelope value. So with the Trees Wind audio component selected, we'll scroll down, find this event, on audio single envelope value, and add it to our event graph. Every frame this will output the envelope values for all sounds individually. So let's just create a print string and take a look at those. I'm going to format text to make it a little bit easier to read. So we'll get the sound wave and we'll have that as input A and then we'll get the envelope value for that sound wave and we'll have that as input B. So the playing sound wave goes to A, envelope value goes to B and the resulting text will go to our print string. So you can see there, we're getting the amplitude envelopes for Trees Wind 1 and Trees Wind 2 separately. Now we're only interested in the envelope of Trees Wind 2. So we'll delete that and we'll add an equals node here to check for Trees Wind 2. And we'll add a branch so that only when that is true will we get that envelope value. So let's add another print string and look just at the envelope value for Trees Wind 2 now. So you can see we're getting values up to around 0 0.01. So we'll use that upper range to trigger our leaves to fall and for our creeks we'll trigger that at a lower threshold. We're going to build a couple of systems that will run off these on audio single envelope value events. So we'll create a custom event for each. We'll call our first one Creeks and our second one Leaves. We'll also add an input to each of these custom events, a float input so that we can use this to pass that float value of the envelope around the blueprint. We could just do this with a tangle of connections, but this method will hopefully keep the blueprint a bit tidier and more readable. So we'll call that env, and we'll create another one for this custom event here. We'll add a sequence node at this point. And this will call the functions that target those custom events. So we're looking for the function called creeks and the function called leaves. And we'll tie that envelope value 
in to those inputs. So to trigger the creak sound effect, we'll test that envelope value and we'll see if it's greater than 0 0.003 and put a branch here. So if that is true, then we will spawn sound at location. We'll pick our sound here, which is the creak sound. And I'll also add an attenuation asset, tree creak wind. Now these events are going to come every frame and we don't want repeated creak sounds every frame. So we'll insert a do once here so that the creak sound is played. Then we'll have a bit of a delay, let's say five seconds. And when that's finished, we'll come back and reset the do once so that the next time that threshold is passed, we'll have another creak sound. Now we want this creak sound to come from the location of one of our trees. You remember that we're using the attenuation asset of the sound itself in order to find all the tree actors that might theoretically hear it. So at this point, let's get that array of BP tree object references and we'll find its length and then we'll find a random integer within that and we'll use that to get a specific tree. The random integer node is obviously made for working with arrays since it returns random numbers up to the max minus 1. For example, the length of an array may be 12, but since the index of the array starts at 0, there is no index 12. An array of length 12 would only have indexes going from 0 to 11. This is logical, but always quite baffling, so it's just worth a bit of a reminder of that. Once we've got our random tree object, we'll get world location, and we can set that as the spawn location of our sound. Now I'm not going to attach this vector directly to the location, and you'll see why if we look at one of our tree blueprints. In the viewport, you can see that the root location of this tree is literally at the root of the tree. Now we don't really want our creek sounds coming from the root, we want them coming from the branches. So we're going to have to tweak that height or the Z location. So let's split that struct pin and split that. We can feed in the X and the Y as normal, but for the Z we want to add some float values to it. So let's add 500. So now every time the amplitude envelope of this particular sound goes over the value of 0.003, we should play a sound at the location of a randomly chosen tree that's within the radius of the wind sound that's playing. So you can hear that creak coming from over here. and another creek coming from over there. Now we actually want to use the location of that tree for our leaf system as well, so that the leaves come from the same tree as the creek, but only if the wind is even stronger. So let's get that location and set that to a variable instead. Getting world location, we'll promote that to a variable, which we'll call tree location. And we'll do that at this point here, before the do once. Then we can get that location here, split it out, connect up our x, y and z values. And in a minute we'll be able to use that within the leaves section as well. So we can do that now. So when there's a really powerful gust of wind, we want some additional leaves to fall. So again, we'll test the amplitude envelope and we'll say, this time, is it bigger than 0 0.01? Create a branch. And if true, then we'll spawn emitter at location. And that will be the same tree location that we've just got. So let's add that, that. This time we'll put it a bit higher. 
because we want the leaves to come from the canopy of the tree rather than the branches. So another float plus float, and this time we'll say, let's add a thousand. Again, we don't want that to happen every frame, so we'll put our do once node in. We'll have a delay, let's say 10 seconds this time, before that could possibly happen again. Now we're going to spawn this particle system that we saw earlier called falling leaves. And if we open that up, we can see a few things that we could control. First, we're going to get the envelope value to determine the spawn or rate scale parameter. And that's the rate at which the particles are spawned. We know it's going to be greater than 0.01 since that's the threshold. So the min input is set to 0.01 and the max input to 0.02, which was about the maximum number we observed in those values. And these are scaled within the particle emitter to its expected range of between 1 and 2. Then once it's spawned, we'll use the continuous envelope data to determine the velocity life using the speed scale parameter and the rotation of the leaves using the rot scale parameter. Again, we've set these up with appropriate min inputs and these are being scaled to appropriate outputs within the particle system. We'll store a reference to that component because we're going to do a couple of things with it. So we've created a new variable here we'll call leaf. And at this point when it's spawned, we're going to set float parameter and set the rate scale using that envelope value. Then we'll get another reference to that leaf down here. And this is where we're going to set float parameter again to control the speed scale and, and rot scale or rotation scale. Now with these ones we want to drive it continuously from these changes in this envelope. So we'll add a sequence before this do once to drive those changes. So that time we didn't get a creek or a particle system. That time we got both. So you could see that tree over there in the middle. We had a creek and a particle system of those leaves falling. Just a creek that time. And there you can see it came from the tree just above us. In this video, we've seen how we can access the individual real-time amplitude envelopes of sounds playing on an audio component. In doing so, we can really help to integrate audio with the environment. Driving other audio events or graphical events using audio has many benefits. Firstly, it can automate certain processes for us, but perhaps more importantly, it can create better audio-visual relationships, helping generate a more believable and engaging game world.